Hey everybody, I mentioned uh, in the chat yesterday, I was going to put up a guide on how I use Chris's dynamic compressor. And this is an Audacity plugin that was written in 2011 or 2012 um, by a man named Chris Capel, who tragically died in 2015. Um, he wrote it for personal use. He said he liked to listen to opera and classical music in the car. And because car stereos are generally bad, um, you know, the high marks would be too harsh and the quiet parts would be too muffled. You couldn't hear them. So this was his sort of personal use plug-in to sort of normalize the gain on his classical music tracks for use in the car. And for podcast purposes, it has obvious beneficial uses as well. So I'm looking at a short clip cut out of our most recent episode here, which, I mean, without listening to it, we can look and see that, you know, there's loud parts. There's parts where I taper off to a very low volume level. And at the end of the sentence, I'm running out of breath, so I taper off to almost nothing. So let's take a listen. And sorry about the dog noises. The dog senses the microphone and makes noise, so whatever. Apparently, we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. And as you can hear, there's a little bit of reverb in that clip. Um, unfortunately, I live in Texas. It's very hot here and we have tile floors in our houses to make the house cooler. So I've got another track here that I've tried my best to filter the room reverb out of in Reaper, actually. So let's take a listen to that. Apparently, we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. Okay, that's a lot better on the reverb. So, first thing let's do with this, obviously, you know, we go through my entire sort of tool chain in editing our episodes here. Grab a silent spot, noise reduction, get the noise profile, grab the whole thing. And we'll noise reduce it all. These are the settings I use for noise reduction. Of course, yours may vary depending on your room noise. I'm in the living room. There's a refrigerator in the next room. There's a laptop fan, you know, that sort of thing. So I need 22 decibels of reduction generally. Okay, so with that done, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is a low pass filter and the reason for that is i'm using a condenser microphone which is more sensitive than most dynamic microphones obviously it tends to be a little harsh on s's and t's so i do a low pass filter with 7,000 hertz is the cutoff and I'm going to do six decibels. Um, and let's take a look to see what we've got here now. Apparently we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you. Thank there's a little bit of mouth noise here. You can probably hear where they find our. Um, so that's the next thing I'm going to deal with. There are D click and DS plugins for audacity, which work pretty well for me. 
So let's do the D clicker. These are the settings I'm using for that. I have the number of passes cranked up on the D clicker. So sorry, it takes some time to run. Then we'll do the DS to make sure we're reducing those harsh S's a little bit. Now let's see what we got again. Apparently we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. Okay. That's done an admirable job of minimizing the mouse noises and clicks and harsh S's. So now where we need to start is... Let's amplify this to a peak of minus 1.67. And this sort of exaggerates, again, our, our wild variations in volume here, which this is what the dynamic compressor minimizes. Compressor, basically, is looking at an audio file and given a set of parameters and an amount to make up uh, in terms of gain will... In the simplest of terms, reduce the volume of the loud parts and increase the volume of the quiet parts. So, let's just look at this visually after we run this. And these are pretty close to the default settings on this compressor. Okay. You can see that the quiet parts have gotten louder while the loud parts have stayed pretty similar. Next thing is let's normalize our volume back down to minus three. So just comparing these two tracks visually, you can see, particularly it's like here, okay, this was very quiet. Now it's not so quiet. Um, the trailing off at the end here was very quiet. Now the volume of that is brought up. Uh, this part in the middle was very loud here and then there's quiet on either side of it you can see that these are now more equal so again let's listen to our output here apparently we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us so thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. And I toggle back and forth between those two as I'm playing them back so you can hear the difference. As you notice in the compressed version, the bass has come up. Um... Let's do that one more time to hear the difference. I'm going to toggle back and forth between the original and the dynamically compressed version again. Apparently, we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. And in particularly the lower end of the mid-range uh, in the bass. 
uh, had been brought up with the compression. Um, in addition, the breaths have been made louder, and we'll fix those at the end. So let's do a couple of things here. Let's trim these peaks by about one decibel. Just a simple limiter. Remember, we normalize to minus three. So if we limit to minus four, I was just going to trim one decibel off the peaks. All right. Let's go to normalize to minus three again. And at this point, we want an equalizer to bring us back closer to what we started with. And this is, if you're familiar with equalizer curves at all, this is relatively self-explanatory. If you're not, low end bass is on the left, high end treble is on the right. My mid range is too hot, so I'm taking the mid range down. You can kind of see over here, just a little bit less than six decibels. Sorry, dark mode is not a uh, it's not <laughs> compatible with the equalizer view and audacity and let me turn on bright mode so you can see that okay effect filter curve so we're taking our mid-range down here just shy of six decibels, we'll call it four or five. We're taking our base frequencies down below 100 hertz, like 125 maybe, We're taking those down three decibels, okay? So the point of this is reduce the base a little bit, reduce the mid-range a little bit more because those were made too hot by the compressor. So, This reduced our volume again, so let's normalize again to minus three. And now let's listen to the two side by side again. Apparently we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. That sounds pretty good to me. That's exactly what I'm shooting for. A little bit warmer than what came raw out of the microphone and volume pretty consistent across the board. So, now all we have left to deal with is our breaths. And that's very simple. I'm going to zoom in on these. You can identify them by, you know, I can identify them by sight at this point. I don't even need to listen to all of them. But a simple thing, minus four decibels on Amplify. And I'll just hit Command R and repeat that until they're barely perceptible. I don't like to take them out completely because they sound unnatural. I find that if they're just taken out to where they're just a line like that. That's about what I want. So let's listen to this one more time. Apparently we have reached the phase of listener engagement where they find our mistakes and point them out to us. So thank you, Jennifer, for pointing out that I turned beloved 19th century American poet Walt Whitman into a school shooter. Charles Whitman, as Jennifer pointed out, not Walt Whitman. Sounds good to me. I'll get links to these in the notes. Chris's Dynamic Compressor is a plugin you can download from the Audacity forums. Uh, and I'm going to post a link to the oldest... I guess the newest, rather, the newest uh, non-beta release. Uh, around the time Chris died, 
there was a version 1.2.7 beta release which had a different algorithm than the version 1.2.6 release and the 1.2.6 release had the more advanced settings and features so I'm using the 1.2.6 personally and since sadly Chris died this is a kind of you get what you get kind of deal that's it so keep it forever um, this particular plugin saves me more time editing our show than anything else in any audio processing software um, I was spending hours and hours you know kind of equalizing quiet parts and reducing uh, loud clipping parts here and there before I found this the dynamic compressor you know once you've figured out the equalizer settings you need after it once you're proficient with bumping down the louder breaths that it leaves you with um, you can pretty much normalize gain across however many people you have on your show in a very short period of time and after that you're just down to you know cutting content so this saves me more time than anything else I've found in terms of producing a high quality output but that's the catch you're gonna have to reduce the breaths and you're gonna have to play with the equalizer to find an equalizer setting that you like for your voice so those are the caveats but this is how I do it.